I went from this to this. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Lacey. That's Lacey. I met Lacey. Anyways, hello. How are you? I hope everybody is doing well, especially with everything going on. I know it's been tough for some of us to stay in our house, especially with our mental health. I really hope that you guys can watch my videos and just have some hope and I can share some insight with you guys and you guys just enjoy my videos. Maybe get a little laugh here and there, you know. I just hope that my videos are helping in some way, shape, or form. So today with that being said, I want to try to help anybody, anybody that watches this that struggles with contouring. So, Sudse, on that note, we're going to dive straight into the wonderful world of contour. If you guys struggle with contouring or you're not quite sure how to do it or you have tried it a million times and you feel like it just looks patchy and muddy and gross, then hopefully this video will help you out. I know for the longest time I struggle with contouring. I even watch my old videos and I kind of cringe it's horrible. Oh my god. I really thought I was doing something. Shit happens. Shit happens, you know. I have evolved. Anyways, let's hope that this video helps somebody. Anyone? 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 So if you guys are interested in seeing how I contour my face and the tips and tricks I have for you guys, then keep watching this video. Also, I do want to make a quick disclaimer. This is how I contour my face according to my face shape, according to my standards. I don't contour my face for anybody. I contour my face how I like it and to make my face look slimmer and kind of, you know, not so square. So yeah, I'll get into that more into the video. But I do want to say quickly, I have chosen a winner for the Alyssa Edwards palette, the PR kit from ABH. And if you are interested in seeing if you were chosen, go ahead and check out the description box of this here video. And I do want to say congratulations to the winner. Thank you all for entering. Anyways, if you are new here and you have not been subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, and also make sure you click all notifications so that way you are informed every single time I upload a new video. So hit that like button if you like this video and you find it helpful and also comment down below if you guys want to see any other how-to videos. I know I did this one a long time ago but I literally had no idea what the hell I was doing so don't watch that video, watch this one. Refer to that video for what not to do. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this and let's go ahead and jump on into this I just want to show you guys, this is how I do it. I will throw up a face chart here. Everybody has a different face, so like everybody has a different structure to their face. For example, mine is very square, like my jawline is very square. This is just personally how I contour my face. I'm not saying you need to go buy this face chart either. I'm just stating that this is like a beginner's guide. If you guys want to kind of like get a feel for how you maybe should contour your face or the different ways to contour, go ahead and check out this chart and try them out and then just find the one you like. Honestly, I didn't just start contouring my face because of this face chart. Honestly, I started contouring my face because of how everybody else did it and then I decided from there how I like to do it and it has been a long time perfecting it. A lot of people say that either it just looks like they threw some dirt all over their face and they're not sure what they're doing or they say that they just aren't sure why it doesn't look as good as others. So I'm gonna go in pretty heavy-handed today just because on camera I want it to show but I'm gonna tell you guys on a normal day when I'm not recording I do not put a lot on. Most of my videos you can honestly see that I, it doesn't look like I have very much contour like it's mainly focused in this area. So just know that I pretty much am amping this up because I am behind studio lights. So I want you guys to really be able to see what I'm doing. But start with a light hand and you can always add more, but you can never 
take it away unless you completely start over and that's just a lot of time wasted. I'm going to talk about highlighting, contouring, cream contouring, powder contour, bronzer, the works. So I have already laid my foundation down, I've got my base, now it's time to go into contour and highlight. So I like to always highlight first and then contour. You can go in whatever order you like. It's makeup. There's no rules. So if you like a super intense contour, by all means, do you boo boo. If you think it looks good, that's all that matters. If you like a hardcore contour, just make sure you blend it out. So I'm gonna start with a cream contour. There's numerous products out there. The biggest thing is, is finding your shade. I have this concealer collection from Measurable Difference and honestly I've never used this but I could use this for a cream contour. I'm a fair skinned person. I'm usually like the second to third shade in each range no matter what. For me personally for a highlighter shade this one would probably be just a tiny bit too late but I don't like my highlight shade to be extreme. So I would probably go more towards this one, the second whitest, just so you guys can get an idea. And then for contour shades, I know that a lot of times you want it to show and you want it to be really, you want it to be there. It, or if not, you know, like what's the point? So most people would probably go for one of these deeper shades down here. Personally, I would not. This one is extremely too dark for my skin tone. These ones are too orangey. Honestly, I would probably go for one of these two shades. And I know that doesn't look very deep at all, but on your skin tone, it's gonna look different. Just kind of get a feel for what you like. So I'm gonna actually go in with the Kat Von D Shade and Light Cream Contour Palette. I don't like any of the highlight shades in here. They are all too yellow for me or too like golden. I know that that's not going to suit my skin tone, at least the highlight shades. So I just go in with concealer and I'm going to go in with like an almost white concealer because like I said, I just want to do this for the video. But normally, I don't know if you guys can see the difference on camera, but normally I would go in with something a little bit like this. But I'm going to go in with this because it's like the lightest shade I have. This is the Jeffree Star Magic Star Concealer in the shade C1. I didn't know what shade to buy when I bought this. No regrets, okay? I like to add this, honestly, normally just to lighten up if I have too dark of a concealer. But for purposes of this video, I am going to 100% use this as my highlight shade. So the purpose of contouring and highlighting is to bring light to certain parts of your face and to give you other parts of your face depth. So if you take a picture in the sun, direct sunlight, where is the lightest colors on your face? So in a picture, normally it'd be the parts of your face that stand out towards the front. So like your forehead, your nose, your chin, and your cheekbones. And then also you, with contouring, you want to add depth. So parts of your face that A, you'd like to slim or just naturally kind of deepen and hide. So it's for enhancing and hiding, you know, the whole bit. So I'm not going to go into all that because I'm not a makeup artist. I will say that right now. I cannot say that this is what's for you, this is just what works for me. I'm not saying this is what you have to do, need to do, should do. I'm just saying this is what I do and I hope I can help you guys find the best way to contour your face or if I can just help in any sense make you feel better and more confident when contouring and highlighting. Like I said, I'm going to take this and I'm going to hit the parts of my face that I want to bring light to my forehead and you do not need a ton of concealer to do this honestly the more you add the worse it looks and the harder it gets to blend out so the tip of my nose the cupid's bow and i just hit right here right above my lip and the right in the middle of that cupid's bow and then my chin a lot of times i'll add just a touch on the corners of my mouth and then I always try to 
give myself the illusion of a bright under eye and to be honest most people just do this step to kind of hide bags while highlighting that is the main purpose of that i won't even lie to you damp sponge and we're gonna start blending so i always start with the bottom and work my way up because the product is gonna be soaking into the sponge so i want to start with the part that i'm not as worried about being highlighted because that is going to be where your sponge soaks up the most product so i always start down here make sure you blend very well because you don't want to have no harsh lines and then i move up here and I kind of take this far out because we are going to cover some of that up. So I'm just trying to keep it focused in the center of my forehead and then take it down in between my eyebrows just a smidge. And then I go to my nose and I kind of bring it up just about halfway and slightly on the sides. Just like I said, blend it in nicely so you don't have a really harsh line. And then... I try not to go down really far because as you can see the concealer is super light and then I just blend it until it blends out and then I take the side that I put my foundation on with and blend it into my cheekbone because I don't want that white line to be super contrasting and then the other eye. Okay, I'm just going to hurry up and set my under eyes. I'm not going to set the rest of my face only because I do not want to crease. And as most of you may know, I don't bake. I just take a tiny bit and press that underneath my eyes and bounce because I just don't think baking does anything. That's personal preference. You guys do what you like. This isn't about baking. So, like I said, there's tons of products out there. There's like contour sticks you can use a different shade of concealer i have this revlon one that i've had forever and this is in 06 deep and this is the revlon color stay concealer irregardless there's a lot of products that do work and there's a lot of products that don't so just find what works for you i like to use this little brush this is a morphe e47 brush it is just a little guy it's perfect for like nose contouring but I don't typically do. I honestly just make the lines that I need with this. Like I said I have my shade and light palette. As you can see what shades I use. I use these two right here and because this one is just a little too dark for me. So normally what I do is I just take my brush and I just kind of dab it into both mixing both shades and then I just take it and I make a line but if you guys want to figure out where the best placement is for your contour do the fish face I would just kind of follow that line honestly what I do is I slightly go above that line but this is just because this is how I like my face contoured honestly you want to figure out where your cheekbones are that's what you're trying to enhance on your cheek so my cheekbone is just here so i want to contour right below that does that make sense and then for your jawline you just want to follow the edge of where your jaw starts to run down to your neck and then stay close to your hairline because you can always take it down as you blend rather than try to start down here and blend back because it gets kind of messy because like i said just honestly this was a lot to go in with right away i know how this product works so i know i'm not really worried about it but like i said just stay in that three shape and then if you are using a brush start by blending it slightly just the edges slightly just in a wiggling motion and there you have your lines Follow the natural curves of your hairline. So mine slightly points right here. So if I were to do my forehead, which I normally don't, I would stay in that shape. I would stay follow the natural curve of my hairline. Down to where the sunken part of my cheek is 
And then also a good tip of where you should stop is either you should stop where right about where your center of your pupil is. That might even be a little too far depending on your face. Or right where if you do suck in your cheeks, right where it starts to dip in. So mine literally starts right here. Not where it, it finishes, not like the deepest point, just where it starts to sink in. So mine starts to sink in right about here. And then down here, like I said, you just follow the natural curve of your jawline. Use whatever side of the beauty blender you prefer. If you have issues with your contour, like not being creamy enough, what I like to do is take a little like skin booster serum of some sort and like this one from Makeup Forever or the Farsali, the Farsali drops. I like to take something like that and just take a tiny drop of it and put it in there and mix it in really well before putting it on my face. And I find that helps blend better. So I like to use the butt of my beauty blender and when I start blending, I stay right along this line. I don't like to like focus it up or down. I try to just stay right on that line. That's why I kind of go above where my natural curve of my jaw or not my jaw of my bones are because I used to always have a really bad habit of blending downward and if you're gonna blend up or down I would suggest going upward if you feel you've gone too far down always just take it up because you can fix this and you're just gonna blend that out try to keep it your beauty blender as far back into your hairline as possible you are gonna get it in your hair but I would rather it be in my hair than everywhere else because with the excess product you can always blend onto your forehead see how I'm doing that right here just to kind of give it a more blended look I'm just taking the extra product on my beauty blender and blending and as you can see it doesn't look like I have a whole lot on my face but also by focusing it straight where you are picking it up, basically you're picking up your beauty blender and putting it right back down. And by doing that, you're not disturbing the foundation underneath. So this is what it looks like when it's all blended in. It's not a huge difference, but it's a difference. I personally don't cream contour very often, only when I want like that really intense contour because I feel like it just adds a base for my powder contour. I personally just like powder contour if I have to pick one or the other, but just do what you prefer, get the feel. As crazy as it may sound, but if you're having a hard time finding your jawline or blending it out, what I tend to do is make your fat face. It works. <laughs> yeah, so cute. <laughs> And that is all for cream contour. So now this is where I recommend going in with your setting powder. And then I'm gonna use my Fit Me Matte and Poreless in Translucent. And I'm not going to swipe, I'm gonna bounce. Because if you swipe, you're just moving around all that product that you just worked really hard to lay down. I'm like really packing this on here. And I'm really gonna focus it in those spots that we are going to contour only because you want something for your powders to really like blend with because if you were just to go on a wet base it's just gonna stick and look patchy and look muddy that's when you get that dirty look at least for me some people can contour and make it look good on a wet base but like personally I just can't and I never have been able to, so I don't. I'm gonna show you with my two favorite contour palettes. I don't typically use the white shades in here, the light shades, because it's just not, it just never works for me. So I have the Naked Skin Shape Shifter Palette by Urban Decay and the Contour Kit in Light to Medium Skin from ABH. These two shades are what we're going to talk about. So if you notice the visible difference between them, this one is much warmer and more of like a burnt bronzier shade. And this one is a much more cool tone shade. So for me, this is contour. This is bronzer. 
some people don't use contour they just bronze or they cream contour and then bronze with a powder bronzer I like to contour and then bronze same thing with this palette I don't typically use the top row or this shade because it is very deep for me but I like to use this middle shade as my contour and then this shade for my bronzer bronzer is to really give your face that like warmth so that sun kiss look per se so like if you were out in the sun you want the bronzer to hit the spots of your face that you would naturally get burnt or a suntan first so for me it would be like the higher points of my cheekbones and right here like on my temples I don't typically contour those spots per se I just follow that same line and then I take bronzer above it so I'm gonna show you guys how I do that you guys have seen me do this many times in videos so we're just gonna go in with the ABH palette and we're gonna first start with this shade right here throughout the years I have definitely switched it up between brushes I've used all of these brushes these are just to name a few for my contour and they're all pretty much like the same they're not super super fluffy but they are like these ones are a little more dense in theory than like if I were to pick up this brush this is much fluffier it has way more flexibility than any of these it's they're not really 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 dense but it's a little more dense so honestly just find a good brush I wouldn't go with, in with something that's like super duper dense or flat like this I just wouldn't prefer it I would say go in with something a little more fluffy but at the same time has a little bit of stiffness to it usually for a beginner I would say start with something like this they're everywhere they make a ton of these this is honestly one I got out of a like a wish brush set and it honestly fits the curve of your face very well so this is what I started with this is what I recommend but today I am going to use my Luxie 522 tapered highlighter brush like I said I'm gonna go into that middle shade and I'm just going to get it all over the top of my brush and right where you can see the natural curve of my face if you are having a hard time finding that curve and you aren't if the fish face the fish face the fish face isn't working for you start at the top of your ear so like right here where your ear is and if you're unsure go just a slight bit above it as you can see where I'm at and then just start blending okay my biggest mistake I made when I first started is I would go in and make a line first and then blend it out but if I were you I would just blend like I said when in doubt blend upwards don't blend down or just kind of stay in a straight line circular motion and then I like to just kind of start to bring it up my hairline dipping in as needed like I said you can always add more but you can never take away I like to take a lighter hand when I get towards the front, kind of feather it back. And the whole time I'm not pushing, like I'm not doing this. I'm just taking a light hand. We've got some color. So like I said, I like just keep following my hairline around. I like to do the whole parameter of my face because I have a square, more square face. I like to kind of round my face out so that's why I do this and if you have a larger forehead or you're like me you just don't have bangs or anything to kind of hover, cover anything up you would bring your contour down farther on your forehead so like some people bring it clear down here but that's because they're trying to make their forehead look smaller and I'm just blending it forward so it doesn't look really harsh and then the same goes for my jawline you're essentially just going over those spots that you cream contoured you're just doing it with a lot lighter of a hand and a lot of a more of a sheer product and you always want to try to start like back here and blend forward because that way the most color will be focused 
back here where people aren't going to see it as much. When you are doing your neck, you want to try to go down a little farther than you normally would, making sure you blend it in so you're not have, you don't have a harsh line. Now I'm just going to run back over everything and make sure it's nice and blended. Bronzer. For bronzer, I like to go with a more fluffier brush. Like this is my normal contour brush for like the last three years. But that brush I showed you earlier, it'd be a good brush to use. But I like this one because it's just a little bit smaller, but it is nice and fluffy. I don't propose that you would use a compact, really dense brush. Um, I used to use those and um, I would wonder why my contour would look very patchy. It's because I was like packing it on one spot and then just dragging rather than dispersing the product and blending with a fluffy brush. The more dense a brush is, the better it is for packing rather than blending. So we're going to go into our bronzer shade, this guy over here. And you see how warm it is compared to this guy right here. So you always want to use a warmer shade for bronzer and for contour. Use something cooler. Or if you are more deep, you could use something more warm. It just depends on what you like. My skin is so fair and cool tone. If I was to go in with something straight away like this and just use it for contour, it would look really, really bad on me. So what I do for my bronzer is I just dip in until I can see just a little bit on the brush. I'm going to focus this right here on my actual cheekbone. See how intense that is already? So I swipe it backwards into my hairline and slightly blend it out, but you can already see. And I bring my bronzer in just a bit farther than I would with my contour. I blend it into my blush and my bronzer, or my contour. So I don't mind getting a little more messy with this. And since I know that this is super pigmented and I don't want a lot more each time, I literally am just going to tap in one time and then blend. And I'm just gonna go over the rest of my face in the same spots that I did with my contour, but I'm not being as focused in one area. And I'm blending each spot and I'm just being less precise. And that really makes the difference of like when I'm finished, just contour, contour and bronzer. With bronzer, I just like to give myself a quick side kiss look. It's always a much faster process than contouring because I don't have to focus it as much into certain areas, I'm not blending as much. It's just kind of more of an effortless on the go. And then for my bronzer, I like to just run it down the sides of my nose and across the tip. That's really it for bronzer. Anyways, that is all I have for you guys today. I really hope that you guys can take something away from this video, even if it is you don't like to contour your face like this. I just hope that in some way, shape, or form, I can help you. Like I said, if you guys have any other questions, please comment down below. Do not be afraid to ask. I will try to get back to you as soon as possible and as many of you as possible. I try to make sure that I at least read all of your comments. If I don't reply, I at least try to like them and like let you know that I have seen your comment. Anyhow, I hope that this worked for you guys. I hope that this was some kind of insight for you guys, some way, shape, or form. If it was, please give this video a big thumbs up. And that is all I have for you guys. So I will see you guys in the next video. I love ya. Bye!